So uh, my book is called uh, Mosquito Empires, uh, Ecology and War in the Greater Caribbean, 1620 to uh, 1914. And it's uh, an environmental history and a history of disease and a history of imperial competition and a history of uh, revolutions in the region between northern Brazil and the Chesapeake. So I started on this project almost 25 years ago in a sense when I was a graduate student. I got interested in the uh, history of yellow fever. didn't do much with that but I came back to it just a few years ago. I decided to make it my main scholarly project and uh, so I worked on it off and on for about six years. Sounds like a long time, but uh, history books do take a while to gestate. The main argument of the book is that with the arrival of a plantation economy and the slave trade, ecological changes took place in this zone in the Americas, mainly in the 17th and 18th century, ecological changes that made circumstances much more propitious for the mosquito vectors of yellow fever and malaria and for the communication of the pathogens themselves, which is a virus in the case of yellow fever and uh, plasmodia in the case of malaria. So these ecological changes made it easier for these diseases to circulate and because yellow fever in particular is extremely dangerous and uh, lethal to people who have no prior exposure to it, it hit different populations differently. People who had been born and raised uh, in the uh, vicinity of the vector and the virus got it as children. If they survived, which children are much more likely to do than adults are, they were good for life, immune for life. Whereas people born and raised elsewhere where there is no yellow fever, extremely vulnerable if they encounter it for the first time as adults. And what this meant politically, and this is the real argument of the book, is that the Spanish territory in the Greater Caribbean was defended in large part by yellow fever because people coming to attack that territory came from high latitudes, cooler places, no vector, no virus, no immunity. Whereas people born and raised and serving in local militias or long-serving Spanish regular troops who'd been in the region for 10 years, either they were dead or immune uh, after uh, a couple of years. So, in effect, the Spanish Empire stayed Spanish, in part because of yellow fever and malaria. And then, the last part of the argument, when the populations born and raised in the Americas started organizing themselves for their own independence, starting wars of revolution, they enjoyed the same advantage with respect to yellow fever and malaria that the Spanish Empire had earlier enjoyed. And forces sent out to quell revolution, whether it's the American Revolution in 1780-81 in South Carolina and Virginia, or the Haitian Revolution, or the revolution in Venezuela and Colombia, part of the wars of independence of Spanish America, or the War of Independence of Cuba, 1895-1898. In all of these, yellow fever especially, but in the case of the American Revolution, malaria played a partisan role, helping the revolutionaries win by attacking the forces uh, arrayed against them much more seriously. So that's the argument of the book. I'm glad it's done. I hope some people will read it. Thank you.